A recent Pew survey indicates that almost 75% of people who never attend church or rarely attend church think that there's conflict between science and the Christian faith. And you wonder if that perception of conflict is what keeps them away from a church experience. Is there really conflict between science and Christianity? I'm joined today by Dr. Mike Strauss, who's going to help answer that question. Mike Strauss is a particle physicist and a Christian. Mike, again, thank you so much for being with us. Um, one of the things that the Bible teaches is that God has revealed himself to us through the record of nature. Do you see evidence for God's fingerprints, for God's handiwork in nature? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, my research studies the smallest particles in the universe. The uh, atoms are made of nuclei, nuclei are made of neutrons and protons, and protons and neutrons are made of things called quarks. And quarks and how they interact is what I spent much of my life studying. And what you find is that, you know, the deeper you go in the structure of matter, it's just remarkably well put together. There are so many things. Um, for instance, you know, there are these things called virtual particles at the subatomic world, particles that pop into existence and then out of existence. And the number and mass of the virtual particles in the proton help fine tune its mass, which is an important parameter in the universe we live in. And you just delve into the subatomic world and you find more and more of these things that look extremely well designed. Um, one of my favorite subjects in school was quantum mechanics because quantum mechanics describes the universe at the size of an atom or smaller. And the subatomic quantum world is so much different than anything we experience. Um, virtual particles pop into existence. The wave function seems to indicate a particle can be at two places at the same time. So I could be here interviewing you and laying on the beach of the Bahamas at the same time. And, you know, those things seem so bizarre, but that's the way the universe is made. And those things are required for us to exist. So whoever made this universe has this extreme amount of ingenuity and creativity that you can't even imagine to, do, to build a subatomic world that's so different than anything we experience, but is required for us to exist. Yeah, that's really, really, really interesting. Um, what do you then see as the most compelling evidence for God's existence? Well, I, well, I think, first of all, the design in the universe. It's mm -hmm. really remarkable. Um, if you saw that kind of design anywhere else, you would say there's got to be a real designer. And, and just to be clear, it's not controversial that there's de design in the universe, right? Yes, that's probably true. What the controversy is, is it real design or, or feigned design, right? Uh, but yeah, the design looks there. Everything works together really well. I think another great evidence for God is the origin of the universe itself. Mm -hmm. You know, a hundred years ago, scientists thought the universe was eternal. And now it looks like the universe most likely has a real beginning. There's questions about what happened in the first 10 to the minus 35 seconds. But, you know, the fact that it appears this universe had a transcendent origin points to a transcendent cause. Um, I'm always amazed that mathematics describes the universe. Why is it that I can write an equation that tells me what I'm going to see in the lab? An engineer writes an equation to say whether a building will, you know, can be supported with the infrastructure or whatever. And, and when you see equations describe reality, there's an intelligence behind it. But yet, there are these elegant, beautiful mathematical equations. You'll only hear mathematicians and physicists use beautiful and mathematics in the same sentence, right? <laughs> But these equations that describe the universe, where did they come from? Um, and then as a Christian, I think the best objective evidence is the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. It's a historical event that can be investigated. A number of people have tried to investigate the resurrection with the intent of showing it didn't happen, have written books because they eventually became Christians. So there's a lot of good objective evidence for God in general, but particularly the Christian God.